Hey everybody, it's Nathan here. I'm going to show you guys a couple of tips today on how to ink a comic. I'm going to go over a few of the tools that you'll need first. And then I'll show you guys what I do and how I set up my working area. And then I'll ink a little bit of my comic and talk about a couple of the small techniques I have. Um, we're going to ink a couple pages from my newest comic today. It's Vaudeville number two, second part of my junk story. I hope you guys learned something today. Okay, well here's my workspace. It's pretty simple. Um, got the double monitors going. That's new and I really like it. I can have my Photoshop going on the left side and I can have my photo references and whatnot going on my right side or The Simpsons or whatever I might be watching or listening to. Uh, I got a wireless keyboard. That helps a lot. You can remove it very easily from your workspace and not have to worry about anything. Although I do like having a wired mouse for working on my comic. Especially for coloring. Um, it's much easier. It dies out on you a lot less. Today we're going to be inking. So with me I've got a very simple little pen here. A fine tip pen. Something to draw borders with. Um, here's my ruler. It's actually kind of a weird fabric ruler. But you can see through it. Which is very helpful for doing grid type work. And for drawing borders and things like that. And you can see it's got a lot of different units of measurement there, or a lot of small units of measurement, so that you can do a lot of a lot of grid work. It's very good for laying out the pages. Uh, my blue pencils, I like working with three H's and four H's. It's kind of a hard lead, so it leaves a uh, uh, very light line, but it's nice. I'll, that's what I've just gotten used to. Can't work with the number twos anymore. Then I've got three brushes with me. The two blue ones right now are my newer ones. I, I'm not too particular about working with new brushes, although it's very nice to do so. But these are my best, my best two brushes that I'm using right now, the two blue ones. And then I always keep a crappy brush on me, um, which those two blue ones will soon be. Crappy brush, you can, it's the brush that you don't have to worry about. You can use it to ink the large black areas, whatever. Something to dab your brush with. Have to have it. Um, I like to have a little container to put my ink in because I've knocked it over working too many times spilled ink everywhere so this is a little safety measure my ink is the Higgins Black Magic although I've used a million different inks Higgins is the one that I just stick with it's the easiest one to find this one here is the Winsor Newton ink I've used it before it's a fine ink it changes though supposedly a lot of comic artists uh, don't like don't like the Winsor Newton brand because the formula changes too much I like uh, this white eraser uh, and I use it a kneaded eraser too, but I can't find it. A uh, pencil box with all my various little pieces of equipment in it, including some scissors to trim pages, all kinds of other things, sharpies, whatever. Automatic pencil sharpener. A must have. I learned that one from Dave Sims, How to Publish Comics book. You got to keep these things sharp or they don't give you a good line. Your drawings become too fuzzy, and when it comes to the inking process, uh, you're going to be pissed off. You're going to have to go back and re-pencil things, unless you keep it sharpened. So I don't want to spend too much time on this. Very basic. Um, there's a couple more things I like. I like having the window, because it's a hot son of a bitch in my room. Uh, a couple of drawings, things like that. Stuff to just remind me of why I keep working on comics. And uh, this is very helpful, too. A light that you can bend and move, so that as the day changes, you can, you know, get whatever kind of lighting you want on your page and you can angle it to whatever you need. Let's take a quick look at some of the artwork I've been working on. This is the first page of the story. Uh, it's got a title there at the top. I'm keeping that blank. I'm going to do the title later in Photoshop and Illustrator. And here's the page. It's just got one caption on it. It's kind of a splash page there and I've already penciled and inked it as you can see. This is the page I'm working on. It's been penciled you can see there I gave it a pretty well defined pencil but the black areas I didn't bother to shade them in with pencil it takes a little bit too much time for my taste it's nice to be able to see where your blacks are but at this point I'm looking for I'm looking to see how fast I can get through a few pages and make sure that I'm being efficient with my time here you can see I've blackened a few more of the dark areas with my pencil before the inking stage than I did on the other page this is the third page here it's all pretty well penciled right now. And you can see on that bottom panel, there's a, I didn't really put too many of the black uh, pools of black in, but I'll do that with the ink later. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I like to do is take this keyboard, 
Move it aside. I can mess with that thing later. I don't really need it. And replace it with my artboard. So now I have everything sitting right there. A lot of people like to have a real truly inclined table or a real easel, but I prefer to work on a board that I put on my lap. It's bad for your posture, so you probably shouldn't do it, but it's how I like to work. If you check it out, that thing's seen quite a few comic pages go across it. The surface is completely smooth from me drawing. Just turning my pages is completely worn and smooth, and one of these days I'm going to wear a hole right through the middle of it, probably. Now let's get one of these pages and get started. Okay, so you can see I've already started on this page. And there's a couple other things I've already done before I even sit down to draw. First, I wash my hands. You have to have clean hands. Uh, your hands get oil on them all the time. And when you touch your book, you'll not only leave oils on the page, but you will start to attract things to your fingers and you'll put smudges all over it, black fingerprints, and you don't want any of that. You want your page to be as white as possible when you show it off to editors or other artists because their pages are all going to be badass too and you don't want to look like a schmuck. Another thing I've done is I've already checked my ink for the proper consistency. You want to have a nice fluid line when you're working with a brush. You don't want to have chunky ink, you want to have it uh, you don't want to have it dried out, so what you can do is just put a couple drops in, shake it up very well over the sink, check the consistency, and do it again. I've already got mine just how I like it. When you leave the top of your ink bottle off, your ink will dry out over time and become a higher concentration of pigment to water. I know it sounds picky, but that's just how it works. Now, a lot of people like to do practice uh, lines on a separate page before they even put down their first line on their, on their original board, but I don't really do that. Um, the way I do it is I'll draw it, I'll, uh, excuse me, I'll begin to brush in some ink into a black area first, and then kind of do it, let my fingers get a little practice, figure out what they're doing, and then once I feel like I'm confident enough to make a straight line. I'll do so. Another way uh, that I like to start off before I do anything with my brush is I like to play with the blacks first and make sure that the that I've got the right amount of ink on the tip of my brush before I start doing some some kind of fancy small line work because you don't want to have a big glop, big black blob of ink built up on the tip of your brush and then go try to do some feathering. You'll get a big black blob on your original page and it'll look like crap. Well guys, that's my first video. Not too much real inking went on, but I got a few things out of the way that I had to do. Got you your tools, got you set up, got you where you need to be to get some real work done, which is what we're going to do on the next video. In the meantime, I hope you guys will take the time to check out the first issue of Vaudeville. Um, I'm putting, out, putting it out real soon. I'm going to take pre-orders giving away free sketches, free artwork to people who want it. If you like the artwork that you saw in here, I've got 64 awesome pages. The comic kicks ass. You can't buy a comic like this anywhere, anywhere besides from me. So hit me up and I'll get it to you. I hope you're having just as much fun with your comic as I am. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Keep working and you'll finish it. I swear.